small garden plots. Welcome back to another episode of Not Afraid to Garden. Today is another beautiful hot day, um, and again, you guys don't, you guys know that I don't mind the heat. Um, and sometimes it's just the humidity, but today is it's still okay. But there's a couple of clouds, but we're fine. Um, and today, what I want to talk about is actually flocks. Um, right now, and flocks are perennial, and right now they're in full bloom in my garden. So. Um, all throughout the garden you'll see uh, these flocks and I've actually planted a couple of different colors but uh, I think the purple ones are more in bloom here purples kind of like a pink um, so as you guys can see here look what the flock looks like and and again I planted these many years ago and look how beautiful this is and this just keeps blooming you know these flowers keep coming up in clusters and they just keep shooting up like this in little branches that come up so eventually uh, this gets pretty full and then what i do is um in, in in order to spread out throughout the garden i just dig out a piece of it with the root and just keep planting it somewhere else so here it is again here here and let's see throughout the garden where i can show you where some of it is growing i also have it in like an orange color and it's right back here actually right on this side here Oop, right back there that's actually the newest one i just planted that not that long ago and but look how beautiful that one is let me tell you what color this is Glamour Girl, tall garden flocks, full sun perennial, you guys can see. And, and eventually, next year I'll divide it. Um, this is the first year here, so I am going to leave it there. But look at that color, it is gorgeous. Then I have, oh I have another one with a little bit of what, uh, white in the center. And that one I also planted further back. And I think that one I'm going to separate probably next year also. Let's, let's go take a look at that one. All right, so we are on the side of the cabana here. And look at the flocks on this side. Look at the size of these flowers. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in just a little bit so you guys can take a look at that. Yeah, so I'm going to separate that one next year. And then there's more flocks back there. Um, and then again, it's just all throughout the garden only because it brings a lot of color. Um, during this time when some of the plants have already flowered and again here and then if you guys you see further back you'll see behind these beautiful gorgeous plants that have yellow flowers right behind that you see a little bit more of that phlox um, so it is in full bloom this year and I am loving it um, Ooh, let me show you one area where they just stand out because somehow mixed it up with these yellow flowers together and let's take a look at what that looks like again you guys can experiment and just play around with these colors so that way um, again you have so much bright colors in your garden and uh, so let me show you where that is right back here Ooh, before we get there look it's a full bloom here is in the entrance of the garden. Look at this. And again, these have been here uh, for many years and that's probably why I have more of them on this side. But look at this. And here. So I say keep growing, just, um, just dig out some of it and then make sure it has the root and plant it somewhere else. And it, although it will die back, um, in the following year, it comes right in. I haven't had any problems uh, with these plants um, 
separating them or propagating them, uh, regrowing them somewhere else at all. Look at this one. It's so heavy that it falls sideways. But look at this. Did you guys see that? So I think what I'll, some of them I may need probably like a stake to hold them up because they get top headed, top uh, heavy headed. Yes. All right. Follow me, guys. Look at this. What do you guys think about this combination? With the yellow and the pink. Um, so there are a lot of uh, butterflies in this area and bees that are. Um, pollinating all of these plants. But look how gorgeous it looks here. I'm thinking of maybe adding different color flocks in this area, again, just to bring out that color. Yeah, so this is my favorite corner, actually. So now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna show you how to mount um, a little, an orchid, it's a Phileopsis. And I have a piece of driftwood that I brought back from Jackal Island in Georgia. Uh, we went, we visited actually uh, Driftwood Beach, um, and I did get a couple of pieces from there, guys. So uh, I am going to show you how to mount that one. And I mounted one already. So let me show you what the one I mounted already, and I'll show you very quickly how to mount another one on a piece of driftwood. Now, driftwood is, is very expensive. Um, so you may want to maybe shop around. Sometimes you can find driftwood in. Um, like yard sales, people. I, some people don't know the value of it, so um, you may be able to find it that way. Or you know what? If you're visiting different areas and you see something, you know that um, no one's going to miss. You know, uh, you can definitely just pick up a piece. That's what I did. But let me show you what that looks like. Come on. All right, guys. So I prepared everything, got everything ready, and I thought that I worked right in front of this color because I can't, I can't stay away from this color here. It is gorgeous. Uh, so I do have a Philopsis, Philopsis, I believe that's how you pronounce it, orchid here, and I've had this for many, many years, but I realized that on the, um, on the shoot that it has, that it gives me an orchid, um, actually I got another growth here of an orchid that it grew in with roots here. So that's been there for quite some time. Now I had another one here and I cut that one earlier. And look what I did, how I mounted that. So what I did was, again, I had a piece of driftwood and then I got a piece of wire. I did tie the orchid onto the driftwood there. Let me just take this off. It's very secure there. And then I put a piece of wire to hang it and then I just added the, um, the Spanish moss around it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's actually the smallest orchid that I have. But eventually it'll start wrapping around this driftwood. And this driftwood is very light. Um, so it, it will definitely, um, the roots do handle that very well. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's go ahead and cut this here. So I'm going to cut it just a little bit underneath that node where the roots are. You guys can see. Oops. There we go. And then let's cut this other piece up right above it. So I ended up with just this. So here's my orchid. I have the driftwood here. Uh, this driftwood is pretty big, um, but again, you know, this orchid, um, the roots will start to grow very quickly. Uh, so I did grab another piece of wire and I'm going to put it around it and it's actually going to be sitting more on that on that stem there. So I'm just gonna wrap it around. I wanna secure this orchid on here so it doesn't, doesn't move. And I wanna find just a good spot where it looks really good. I think here, 
Um, it's going to work out really good here. All right, I'm just going to tighten it in the back. So as I'm tightening it back here, again, I'm being very careful not to damage the root. So just, uh, just spin it and spin it around until it tightens up as much as you like and then straighten out the orchid on how you want it to show i think that's pretty good i think i almost have it centered there like that. and then i'm going to now see how i just wrap that around so you don't even see that at all again it's nice and tight back here the orchid is nice and secure. It's not choking it there, so it's not doing any damage. That root is exposed there. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to, this already has a hole here from one side to the other. If you don't have, it doesn't have a hole there, you can always uh, make one. Uh, but I don't have to worry about making one here because it already has it. So I'm going to put this through. Oof, this sun is getting hot out here, guys. Um, so let's kind of wrap this up a little bit here. And again, I'm just going to twirl it around like this just to secure it. And then I have now where I'm going to hang it. Isn't that gorgeous? Then let's add the, um, let's add some Spanish moss also to this one. And the Spanish moss also keeps the roots nice and protected. And once you continue to water that Spanish moss, it also waters that root. So look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm going to hang this also on the raw iron gazebo where all of the other vandas are. So there it is. So you guys can mount orchids just like this. how beautiful they look there so um so yeah guys thank you again for watching my video if you haven't had a chance to subscribe please go ahead hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit that notification button so that way you can be notified of the next videos that are coming along again there's so much going on in this garden guys that i want you guys to definitely get an opportunity to watch this video thank you for all you guys that are supporting my channel and again subscribe to my channel again i will continue to support you also uh, so thanks again enjoy this beautiful beautiful day and i'll catch you guys on the next video peace